Hello, and thank you for taking the time to listen to this scoping presentation for the Summer Flounder, Scup, and Black Sea Bass Commercial and Recreational Allocation Amendment. This presentation will cover background on the amendment, a description of the scoping process, examples of types of alternatives that might be considered, and next steps. As background on the amendment, Summer Flounder Scup and Black Sea Bass are managed cooperatively by the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council, also known as the Council, in federal waters, and the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, also known as the Commission, and member states in state waters. Accordingly, this amendment is a joint action between the two groups. It will modify the complementary fishery management plans, or FMPs, for each group. The scoping process is also a joint effort and comments received will be reviewed by both groups. The purpose of this action is to consider potential modifications to the allocations of catch or landings between the commercial and recreational sectors for summer flounder, scup, and black sea bass. We are in the scoping stage now. Scoping is the first step for amendment development after an amendment has been initiated. Scoping is an early and open process for gathering input on the scope of issues to be addressed in an action. It helps inform the development of a reasonable range of management alternatives for further analysis, and it is the first formal opportunity for the public to comment on the action, including making suggestions or raising concerns before the range of options is developed and any action is taken. For these reasons, your input at this stage in the process is very valuable. So why was this action initiated? For all three species, the total allowable catch or landings is allocated between the commercial and recreational sectors based on percentages defined in the fishery management plans. These percentages are based on historical proportions of landings or catch from each sector. The years used to define the relevant historical period varies by species, as I will show on later slides. These allocations were established in the early or mid-1990s, depending on the species, and they have not been revised since that time. The main reason this action was initiated is that our understanding of commercial and recreational catch and landings during past and recent time frames has changed since these allocations were established, including revisions to recreational and commercial data that I will summarize in the next few slides. In terms of revised recreational data, the Marine Recreational Information Program, or MRIP, provides recreational catch and landings data from 1981 through the present. In recent years, MRIP made major changes to their methodology for estimating recreational effort and catch, which I will describe in more detail on the next slide. Based on these revised methods, in July 2018, MRIP revised their entire time series of catch and harvest estimates for all species going back to 1981. The revised estimates of catch and landings for summer flounder, scup, and black sea bass are on average much higher than the previous estimates, especially in more recent years. This slide shows a high-level overview of how the MRIP estimates are generated. There are two main components to the estimates, fishing effort and catch rate. Effort is measured in estimated angler trips, and catch rates measure the number of fish caught per angler trip. Those two estimates are combined to generate the overall catch or harvest estimates. The effort data for anglers fishing from shore and from private or rental vessels were previously collected through a telephone survey that relied on landlines, but those data are now collected through a mail survey. The transition from the telephone survey to the mail-based survey was the biggest driver of the changes in the overall catch and harvest estimates. The telephone survey had become less effective over time and it underestimated recreational effort. The new mail-based survey is believed to provide more accurate estimates. I should note that for higher fishing effort is measured through a separate effort survey, which has not had the same magnitude of revisions in recent years as the effort survey for anglers fishing from shore and from private or rental boats. The catch rate data has also been modified due to improvements to the intercept survey at angler access points. The intercept survey methodology was redesigned to make it more statistically robust. These changes were less influential than the effort survey changes in terms of their impacts on the overall catch and harvest estimates. On the commercial side, while the landings data have not changed notably from the base year periods, discard estimates have changed. 
This is especially important for SCUP since it has a catch-based allocation, which means it is based on both landings and dead discards. Through the 2015 benchmark stock assessment process, the discard estimation methodology for SCUP was revised, which means for SCUP, both the commercial and recreational data used for the base years for the allocation have changed. The changes in recreational and commercial data have management implications for these fisheries. The historic and recent proportions of recreational and commercial catch and landings under the new data do not match the proportions used to set the allocations. The allocation percentages are fixed in the fishery management plans until modified by a plan amendment. They cannot be automatically updated based on new data. This is important because our management programs require us to constrain catch and harvest to limits set based on these allocations. We constrain harvest using management measures such as possession limits, minimum fish sizes, closed seasons, and gear restrictions. Now that our updated understanding of the fisheries does not match the allocations used to set the catch and landings limits, it's harder to constrain the fisheries to their respective limits. The next few slides show the data used to set the initial allocations, as well as the revised data. This slide summarizes the data used to set the current summer flounder allocations compared to the updated data. All values are in millions of pounds. 60% of the total allowable summer flounder landings are currently allocated to the commercial fishery and 40% to the recreational fishery based on landings data from 1980 through 1989. These allocations were set through Amendment 2 in 1993. Note that the recreational data have changed quite a bit since that time, but the commercial data are unchanged. With revised data, the percentages over these base years are 55% commercial and 45% recreational, compared to the current allocation of 60% commercial and 40% recreational. This slide shows commercial and recreational landings and dead discards from 1989 through 2018 based on the data used for the most recent summer flounder stock assessment. This is meant to provide context for any specific changes to the allocations you may want to recommend. Over the most recent 10 years, the proportions of total summer flounder catch have been about 35% commercial landings, 8% commercial dead discards, 43% recreational landings, and 14% recreational dead discards. Again, the current allocation is landings-based and is 60% commercial and 40% recreational. As noted on the figure, Amendment 2 was implemented in 1993. This amendment implemented the bulk of the current management program for summer flounder, including the commercial and recreational allocation. The next two slides provide similar information for SCUP. 78% of the total allowable SCUP catch, which includes both landings and dead discards, is currently allocated to the commercial fishery and 22% to the recreational fishery based on data from 1988 through 1992. These allocations were set through Amendment 8 in 1996. Note that both the commercial and recreational data changed quite a bit since that time. As previously noted, this is largely due to the MRIP changes and revised commercial discard estimates. With current data, the percentages over these base years are 65% commercial and 35% recreational, compared to the current allocation of 78% commercial and 22% recreational. This slide shows commercial and recreational landings and dead discards from 1988 through 2018 for SCUP based on the data used for the most recent stock assessment. Over the most recent 10 years, the proportions of total SCUP catch have been about 45% commercial landings, 16% commercial dead discards, 34% recreational landings, and 5% recreational dead discards. Again, the current allocation is catch-based and is 78% commercial and 22% recreational. The Joint Management Program for SCUP, including the current commercial and recreational allocation and most of the current management program, was implemented in 1997 through Amendment 8. The next two slides provide similar information for black sea bass. 49% of the total allowable black sea bass landings are currently allocated to the commercial fishery and 51% to the recreational fishery based on landings data from 1983 through 1992. These allocations were set through Amendment 9 in 1996. 
You can see that the recreational data have changed quite a bit since that time, but the commercial data are unchanged. With the revised data, the percentages over the base years are 45% commercial and 55% recreational, compared to the current allocation of 49% commercial and 51% recreational. This slide shows commercial and recreational landings and dead discards from 1989 through 2018 for black sea bass based on the data used for the most recent stock assessment. Over the most recent 10 years, the proportions of total catch have been about 17% commercial landings, 7% commercial dead discards, 61% recreational landings, and 15% recreational dead discards. Again, the current allocation is landings-based and is 49% commercial and 51% recreational. The Joint Management Program for Black Sea Bass, including the current commercial and recreational allocation and most of the current management program, was implemented in 1998 through Amendment 9. The next few slides summarize potential management approaches that might be considered through this amendment. Please keep in mind that not all items will necessarily be addressed in this amendment. The Council and Commission have not identified any preferred approaches or decided on types of measures that will be included in the amendment, so all of these are just suggestions at this stage. This list is not limiting. It's meant to describe general categories of alternatives that may be addressed in order to solicit public comment. Priority alternatives for further development will be identified after the scoping period and consideration of public comments. The one option that we know will be included in this amendment is a no action or status quo alternative since we always include that option in our amendments. Some other options that may be considered include updating the current base years with revised recreational and commercial data, using different base years, using allocation approaches that do not involve base years, considering whether allocations should be catch or landings based. As previously noted, the current allocations for summer flounder and black sea bass are landings based, while the scup allocation is catch based. We may also consider developing allocations based on socioeconomic considerations, such as optimizing economic efficiency or other socioeconomic benefits. And we may also consider separate private angler and for hire allocations within the recreational sector. Other ideas that might be considered include the ability to transfer allocation between the commercial and recreational sectors, the option to set aside some amount of allocation to be used to address unforeseen circumstances in a given year, whether to allocate total allowable catch or landings in pounds or in numbers of fish, whether allocations should be static or dynamic, meaning whether they should remain the same until changed, or whether there should be a mechanism to trigger more frequent and potentially automatic adjustments. We may also consider the ability to modify the allocations through a framework or addendum process instead of an amendment. Frameworks and addenda are usually shorter and more efficient than amendments, so they allow for more flexibility and adaptability, but they usually involve fewer opportunities for public comment. Another issue that may be considered through this action is how to improve recreational catch accounting and estimation methods to the extent that the Council and Commission have control or influence over that. And finally, the amendment may consider improvements to recreational accountability in terms of how to prevent overages of catch and landings limits and responses when overages occur. These are some suggested points to focus on when providing comments on this amendment. Are the existing sector allocations appropriate for managing the summer flounder scup and black sea bass fisheries? If not, how should they be modified? Are there any fishery trends that managers should consider? And what else should the Council and Commission consider regarding this issue? You have multiple options for how to submit comments. You can give comments during a scoping hearing or submit written comments or both. We have scheduled 11 scoping hearings, one of which is a webinar. You can find information about all of these scoping hearings, including the dates and locations on the Council and Commission websites. You can submit written comments by mail, fax, email, or online with the instructions listed here. The deadline for written comments is Tuesday, March 17th at 11.59 p.m. This is a general outline of the expected next steps for this action. Scoping is the first step. 
the Council and Commission will review scoping comments and discuss general approaches to addressing the amendment objectives at their joint meeting in May of this year. From May through July, more specific draft management alternatives will be developed. The Council and Commission are expected to approve a range of alternatives at their August joint meeting and then approve a public hearing document at their December 2020 joint meeting. Public hearings would then be held in early 2021. This is the next major phase of formal public input on the amendment. Final action on this amendment is tentatively planned for the spring of 2021, followed by the rulemaking process, so any changes would probably not be effective until 2022 at the earliest. For more information on this amendment, including the scoping document, links for submitting comments, and information on all the scoping hearings, please visit the website shown on the screen here. You can also contact myself, Julia Beatty, or Dustin Colson Leading with any questions, and our contact information is listed on the screen. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation and submit comments on this action.